Express.js has been around for a long time, and it's still the go-to backend framework for a lot of Node.js developers. And while Express is great for small projects, you will start seeing some big drawbacks once your app scales. The lack of built-in features forces you to either write the same thing over and over again, or maintain a huge list of dependencies. Performance is also a big issue when working with Express. An alternative to Express is Encore.ts, an open source backend framework that aims to make it easier to build robust and type safe applications using TypeScript. It has a lot of built-in tools to make your development experience smoother and performance-wise, it's nine times faster than Express. In this video, you will learn why and when it might be a good idea for you to start using Encore.ts instead of Express. We will also take a look at a simple Express application and then take the steps to migrate that application over to Encore.ts. Let's dive in. Let's start with taking a look at the Express.js app that we will migrate over to Encore.ts. These are the files that we're working with. We have a public folder with our front end. The express.ts file is our main file, and we have a hard-coded database in db.ts. Let's actually start by taking a look at that. So super simple, just a list of users. Our example app is handling the adding and listing of users, and these are the stored users we will have to begin with. Well, let's switch over to our main file. And if you've ever worked with Express, I think everything here should be pretty self-explanatory. We start by initializing Express, and we're using the JSON middleware because we will be accepting JSON in our post endpoint. Here we make use of the static middleware to serve static files from the public folder. And now here is our first endpoint. It's a get endpoint under API slash users and it returns a JSON response with a list of all users in our database. Our other endpoint is a post endpoint for setting new users, and it has some auth and validation middleware, but let's start by looking at the body of the endpoint. We log out the user's info of the user calling the endpoint, and then we get the name field from the request body and use it to add a new user to the database, and then we return the newly added user. But before the request reaches this point, it first needs to pass the auth middleware. And in the auth middleware, we are just looking at the authorization header and checking if that matches the string dummy token. So not the best security, but it will do for demonstration purposes. If the request is not authorized, we return a 401. And otherwise, we set the user ID on the request object and pass the request along to the next middleware which in this case is the validation middleware. We are using the npm library sod for request validation because Express does not have this functionality built in. We are supplying a request schema to the middleware. We then use that schema to validate the request body. And if the request passes the check, we proceed to the endpoint handler. Otherwise, we return a 400 invalid data request. The validation schema we expect for our endpoint is an object with a name field that has to be a string. And that's actually all of our backend code. Let's now take a look at the front end that makes use of these endpoints. Here we are listing our current users. Let's try to add a new one. And that request gets rejected because we're not sending the dummy token with the request. So let's log in and then we can try again. And there we go. Let's move over to the terminal and make some curl requests as well. And we can list the users. And we can add a new user. But let's try if sod does its job by changing the request body field. And that worked. And if we change the token to something else, that works as well. Before we start migrating the Express app, let's just compare Express and Encore.ts on a high level. So some similarities between the two. Both Express and Encore are backend frameworks for Node. And both frameworks are open source. I have linked the Encore.ts repo in the description of this video. Both Express and Encore are unopinionated when it comes to how you choose to structure your code. Encore.ts makes it really easy to create microservices within your application, but you're not forced to do so. 
And both Express and Encore.ts apps are deployable to all mainstream cloud platforms like DigitalOcean and Fly.io, or straight to a cloud provider like AWS or GCP. Now, why might you want to use Encore.ts instead of Express? Well, Encore.ts is nine times faster than Express. And this is because Encore.ts uses a high performance runtime with a multi-threaded asynchronous event loop written in Rust. And this sets Encore.ts apart from pretty much every other Node.js framework. I have linked to a blog post under the video that goes into detail of how Encore.ts works under the hood. So take a look if you're interested. Express is lightweight and easy to get started with, but Encore on the other hand really shines when you need a robust and type safe application and it's also designed to scale to support large systems. Express does not have request validation built in, so you need to use a library like SOD to get that. But Encore.ts has request validation and it uses your TypeScript types to validate the requests. Express does not help you with deployment or infrastructure in any way. You can easily end up in configuration hell. With Encore.ts, you integrate your infrastructure as type safe object in application code. So creating a database or pub sub topic just requires a few lines of application code. Encore.ts builds your application as a Docker image and you just supply the runtime configuration when deploying. That's it. Express is minimalistic in its approach, but Encore on the other hand has a lot of built-in features. Like for example, the service catalog with automatic API documentation and request tracing, both for local and deployed environments. We will take a look at both of these features later in the video. And it's worth mentioning that even though Encore comes with a lot of built-in features, it in itself has zero NPM dependencies. We are now ready to start migrating the app over to Encore.ts. Our first step needs to be to install the Encore CLI. And I'm on a Mac, so I can install it through Brew. But check out the description below the video if you're on a Windows or Linux machine. Next, we can run Encore app init in the root of our project. And this will create an Encore.app file. If you're starting a new app from scratch, you should instead run Encore app create. We get to choose if we're creating a Go or TypeScript app, and then we get to pick a name for our app. Great. Now we need to add the Encore.dev npm dependency to our project, and I will do so by npm install Encore.dev. We are now ready to do some code changes. Because we have an Express app and not starting from scratch, we will do a forklift migration. And we call this migration approach the forklift approach because just in a few steps, we will be able to run the whole Express application using the Encore CLI. And this can be handy if you already have an Express app and still want the app to be functioning as you migrate over the endpoints. First, we need to add a path configuration to our TS config file. And this is needed because when the Encore CLI is parsing your code, it will look for this specific import string. Next, we need to create a file named encore.service.ts. From this file, we will export a new service and give it a name. And this is all you need to do to create a microservice with Encore.ts. All endpoints in this folder and all subfolders to this folder will be part of the user service. And you can create as many services as you like, but you need to have at least one. Let's now look in the Encore.ts file, and this is where our endpoints will live. This file can be named whatever you like, but I named it this just to make it clear where our Encore code lives as opposed to Express. And right now we only have one endpoint in this file, and it's a raw endpoint that forwards all requests to our Express app. It accepts all methods and uses a fallback path to match all requests. And we're doing this so that we can start our app using the Encore run command. We also need to make some minor changes to our express.ts file. Here we need to extend the express request and response objects with Encore.ts raw request and response types. And we can also comment out the dot .listen part of our code, as Encore CLI will now be responsible for running the server and handling the hot reloading. Let's go back to the terminal now and run Encore Run. The app is now up and running, 
We also get a URL to the development dashboard that we will look at later. But let's open our front end again and verify that the endpoints still work as expected. We try to add a user. We log in. And that still works. Okay, now we will start replacing things in our Express app with the Encore.ts counterpart. And when we're done, we can remove Express as a dependency to the project. On the left, we have the Express.ts file open and on the right, the Encore.ts file. I have already written the code, so let's go through it together. Let's start with our list endpoint which is this piece of code on the Encore.ts side. You create an endpoint by calling the API function, passing in an options object and an asynchronous TypeScript function. In the options object, we specify the method and we also set the path. The function does not take any arguments as we're not expecting any input for our endpoint, but we specify a return object, which is what will get returned to the client. In this case, it's the list response we define as an interface here above. And it's the same thing as we return from the Express app. Encore will use this type for a bunch of things, like create automatic API documentation. Let's now remove the Express endpoint as it's no longer needed. Next up, let's do the post endpoint. We specify the method, set the auth option to true, which will require requests to this endpoint to first pass the auth middleware, and we set the path. This endpoint expects a user object. Encore.ts will automatically validate requests based on this type and return a 400 if the body payload does not match. The endpoint will return a user if the insert worked as expected. And in the body of the function, we log out the user that called the endpoint, we add the user to the database, and we return the user. Now, let's look at the auth middleware. And we create one in Encore.ts by calling the auth handler function, passing in the request params, and in this case, we're expecting the authorization header. We return a user ID that can be picked up by the endpoints. In the body of the auth handler, we do the same thing as in the express case. We check if the header contains the dummy token, and if not, we return an unauthenticated error, and if it does, we return the user ID. The last step is to create a new gateway specifying the auth handler. We can now remove all of the express code used for the add endpoint. And the only thing that the express app is doing now is serving the frontend files. With Encore.ts, you can serve static files using the api.static method. And just like in the express case, you just need to specify the path and the directory, and that's it. And now that we don't need to forward any more requests to the Express app, we can remove the catch-all route we created earlier. And that's it. The only thing left is to remove Express as a dependency to our app. Let's move back to the terminal and once again run the Encore run command to start our app. But this time let's open the development dashboard to interact with our app through there. The development dashboard has a bunch of tools that help you in your development process. Like for example, the service catalog that I talked about earlier. Here we can see all of our endpoints, so let's select the add user one. Here we can see the up-to-date request and response type documentation. And for the get user endpoint, we can see that we're returning a list of users. We can even see the JSON representation. Let's go back to the API Explorer to interact with our APIs. We select the get user endpoint from the list and call that. And we get to see the response right here in the development dashboard. Let's try the add user endpoint. 
If we call the endpoint without setting an authorization header, we get an error. But when we add the token, it works as expected. And if we change the name to a number, you can see that we get warned even before making the request. But if we make the request anyway, you can see that it fails the validation. And to the right here, you might have noticed that we get request tracing for each new request. So let's pick the latest successful call to the add user endpoint. Here we can peek under the hood and see exactly what went into answering this request. Tracing can be invaluable when trying to find a bug in your system and having local tracing always available is incredibly useful. Here we see that the request first hit the auth handler and we can see the user ID that got returned from there. And from the add user endpoint, we can see the request and response body as well as the headers. Let's also verify that our front end works as expected. If we reload the page, we can see that our added user is displayed on the page and I'm already logged in, so I should be able to add a new user and that works as well. And that's it for this video. Now you know how to migrate an app from Express to Encore.ts and also a bit about the differences between the two frameworks. There are a few links under the video, one of which is to the Encore.ts documentation for a written Express migration guide. And if you have questions or want to share your work, join the developers hangout in Encore's community on Discord. See you.